My name is Chris Wakeland. My position is the deaf-blind specialist. So I specifically work with the population of Utah citizens that have um, both deafness and blindness combined. Uh, and uh, then provide services for them. But the two programs that I administer, the first one is called the SSP program, or the Support Service Provider Program. Another way to think of it, uh, sometimes we label it as the Sighted Guide Program, where we help individuals that are deaf and blind. Um, uh, we provide them with a service up to 10 hours a week of a sighted guided person who's been trained by me that will go to their home, pick them up, take them grocery shopping, to the library, to the gym, uh, basically uh, be able to get them out into the community uh, and provide, provide for them uh, their eyes and ears since theirs um, maybe don't work as well, uh, to safely go, go out and be part of the community at large. And then the other program I administer is called the I Can Connect program. And that's a federal program that's um, administered through each of the different states in the U.S., spe specifically as an equipment distribution program for those that are deaf and blind to provide them access to equipment to help them be able to meet their distance communication needs, which basically means be able to help them access the internet, social media, the phone system, so they can stay in contact with friends, families, and doctors, um, and be able to use um, the uh, broadband service um, in a way that they've been isolated and haven't been able to in the past. I'm Marnie West, and I am an outreach specialist we are concentrating on going out into people's homes and doing some outreach stuff, mostly for people that are not able to come into the training center for whatever reason, or maybe they've gone to the training center, but they just need a little bit more or maybe a brush up. So we'll go into people's homes. Um, I also help people that are just losing their sight by marking appliances for them tactily or just helping with adjustment, even just talking things through a little bit. Um, when they're having a difficult time because it is a huge adjustment to lose your vision. So we work with a lot of older people that are just losing their sight through macular degeneration or other things. I always like to say that when I go into someone's home, I really, my goal is to leave them with a little bit more hope than I, they had when I came into their home. Um, because a lot of people, like I said, are just on their beginning journey of losing their vision. And so they're just not sure what they can and can't still do. And, and they're very nervous that they won't be able to do the things that they want to do. And so I just kind of have a starting point where I just ask them to tell me about themselves and about what their hobbies are and were. And we just kind of go from there. So I would say my main thing is just giving hope and giving independence because giving independence gives someone a, a sense of hope and a sense of just being able to know that they can take care of themselves. I want people to know that we're out here, that we are here to help blind adults all over Utah, and that it's not a one-time thing. If someone comes here and then they're struggling a few years later, they can always come back, they can always call us, we're always here. I am Ulvia Guadarrama and I am a low vision specialist within the low vision services. We maximize the vision that an individual has to its full potential um, for them to be doing their daily activities. Once we are in the clinic, we will go through a near um, vision eye exam, which will be looking like this. And we will then after go through magnification, which we show them different magnifiers, depending on where the eyesight um, maybe for the individual. This is a 2.5 magnifier and we go up to a 14 times magnifier. These magnifiers have a light. It seems like uh, lighting is a big factor for individuals that come into our clinic. We also show them uh, lighting in that case. This is a twist lamp. It's a daylight twist lamp. It has an LED light there. Um, we go through distance viewing and we also go through uh, electronic magnifica magnification. Well, every, every 
individual is different and unique. It's definitely depending on what the individual is requiring and needing. For example, if it was a young adult that is in in school, then they will need to have uh, accessibility materials for their schoolwork. Uh, if it's someone that's employed, uh, then they'll want to have those uh, services provided as well to be uh, being active, you know, and productive within their uh, employment and doing what they're required to do. I think one of the things that definitely helps individuals is lighting. I feel like people go from our clinics and they're excited to go home and have good lighting and with their magnification available to them. Another thing is the locator dots. You can put those on you know, any device that you are having a problem identifying a button. And so just knowing where that button can definitely you know, expand to what your abilities can be. You know, being able to just do laundry, someone that can read a TV dinner even, you know, with a magnifier, it definitely makes a difference just being able to read a label in a package. So that's one of the things that I would say it's a big significance thing, whether it may be a small thing for some people, it's a big thing for others. Michelle Folger. I am a vocational rehabilitation counselor with the Division of Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired and also Utah State Office of Rehabilitation. Vocational rehabilitation services are designed to help the blind and visually impaired, in this case, to prepare for, obtain, gain or retain gainful employment. So basically, we're going to help you get out into the workforce. If you've already been into the workforce and you had to leave it due to becoming visually impaired, we're going to try to help you get back out into it. Um, there are a wide variety of services that we provide. And so my question is, tell me what it is that you're looking for, what kind of work you want to do, and then let's narrow it down from there. The intake interview usually is the time when we will encourage the clients to tell us about themselves and their disabilities and their goals and their dreams, and we just want to get to know the whole person. And then we also will talk to them in more detail about our services, what we provide, what the eventual goal that we would like to see is, what our, what our vision is. Uh, different things like that. So it's kind of a get acquainted on both sides. But the next big highlight is the vocational rehabilitation plan, and that's where we sit down with the client and we we set up a vocational goal. This is the job that they want to have, and the, this is how we're going to get there. It might be college. It might be purchasing technology. It might be helping them to find employment in their given field. It might be some mental health counseling to help them deal with blindness adjustment. It might be any number of... If I tried to list everything that goes into it, we'd be here all night, <laughs> and I still wouldn't get it all. <laughs> so, you know, but that's basically, and then the next step then is the, and, and of course, a big part of that for a lot of people is the training and adjustment services here at the Blind Center. We don't want to send somebody to college or out to employment if they are not able to function well as a blind person. They, they need to have these basic skills um, before they're going to really be able to succeed and, and bring their dreams to fruition. Uh, the goal is that at the end of it, they will become successfully employed. We hold the case open for an additional 90 days after they become employed in case they need further services. And then if they don't need us anymore, at that point, we do close the case. Um, but I like to refer to it as a soft closure because at no point do we really say goodbye, you're done, have a nice life. What we say is you don't need us anymore, so we're closing your case right now. If you need us again down the road, here's my phone number. Danielle Frampton, I'm the residential manager. Well, students who come to DSBBI for uh, residential training and also here at the center, but we work on helping them learn to clean, cook, um, any other types of skills, like if they've never vacuumed, like how do you take a vacuum apart, how do you put it back together, um, you know, working with students on, you know, if they can't sweep, then, you know, 
you know, how do we teach them another different type of technique, you know, in the apartments. They're learning um, all these things outside of class and they need definitely a lot more, um, more repetition so that way, you know, they're ready to, you know, move on to the next thing without forgetting. I feel that one of the reasons why we have students come and live in our training facility is because um, we want students to help um, <clears throat> build off of each other. You know, we have five bedroom apartments, um, so, you know, we can have like five girls or four girls. And I think that's important because sometimes when you're in a smaller apartment and stuff, you don't get to spend as much time with um, other people that are going through the same type of vision loss or whatever it might be uh, while you're in training. And also, you know, just um, <clears throat> having that independence of having no one, no one's telling you what to do. You are, you're your own boss. And I think what I would want a student to remember when they leave uh, training is knowing that they are worth something, that they um, came through this training center with not very much and they're leaving with a, a lot more than what they had before.